All right, well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Flying with Mike. We are live out of Nashville, Tennessee, headed to Boston, Massachusetts. So, hope you enjoy the flight today. We're in the Zebo. Uh, we're going to kind of hang the uh, MD-80 up in the hangar for a little bit. Uh, we tried to do a, a training mission yesterday, heading over to... Uh, Scott Mid-America from uh, uh, Nashville. It's only like a 250-mile run. Uh, but some things came up, and we had to cancel the uh, uh, stream uh, before we even got off the ground. Uh, so hopefully everyone's doing well this week uh, as it starts off here on this Monday. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're uh, looking forward to this flight. We were going to try and... Uh, double up on the other run but I didn't realize the times and all and uh, so I'm working on trying to do another one where we fly out of an airport to an airport to another trying to keep fly times within an hour no more than a hour and a half so here's the aircraft today we're gonna be uh, flying again for sim Air Force uh, feel free to uh, uh, Look them up, check them out. Uh, they are a really good outfit. Stand by. I believe we may have just gotten our squawk code. We did. Let me uh, write that down. All right. From uh, Poscon, and that is who we're going to be flying with. We don't have any ATC showing up on the map in our direction. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, we're flying Delta. Uh, November 365, it's with the Sky Team, and... Uh, we look forward to the run to Boston. So with that, let's hop up into the cockpit. Now, we are powered up. <clears throat> um, so we're going to go through the acceptance real quick, uh, hitting the highlights, and then get right into planning the flight. So, all right. Uh, but first off, let's touch in on the pre-brief here. And for that, let's pull in Sim Toolkit. Wrong one. Hang on. Helps to always hit the right one. And Sim Toolkit should now be up on your screen. Um, so uh, we'll start right off with the weather. We're uh, as of uh, 1353. That is an hour old. Winds are 350 at 9. Uh, visibility 10 miles and we've got a few clouds at 3,000 scattered layer at uh, 4,500 broken layer at uh, 14,000 on and off again rain here <clears throat> uh, while we were pre-flighting before the stream a couple of showers rolled over the airport so uh, oh, we also have an overcast layer at 20,000 all right temperature is 7 degrees Celsius out there 2 degrees on the dew point uh Oh, excuse me for yawning in your ears there, folks. Altimeter right now, or an hour old, 3016. And like I said, we've had uh, rain showers pushing over the airfield from time to time. We are at Nashville. It's uh, 600 feet above sea level. Runway 31 is the animal we're going to take off on today. It's 11,030 feet in length. Has a heading of 316. So course in the U.S. transition levels 18,000. Uh, Boston right as you would expect 19 feet above sea level runway 33 left there is 10,083 feet heading of 330 so and we'll probably shoot the ILS we'll see though how it is when we get there. All right and with that uh, let's take a look real quick at one feature within Sim Toolkit as it come on come on sim toolkit i know you can do it there it goes guess you can't click the icon you got to click the name right now it shows that there is a shower either not reaching the ground or reaching it here over the airport uh the feature though that i want to show is that if you zoom in enough on the map you're going to get the taxiways and runways now sometimes they're labeled sometimes they're not as you can see some of the gates are being labeled off here as FedEx but 
none of the gates are. That's kind of weird. And it could very well be it's still trying to sync everything up. So, but anyway, where, where's my little, well, you probably can't see my blue dot within the blue field, but we're right up here. Oh, that's me, I guess. Um, and we're going to basically push back taxi around. Head, oop, got to scoot back, hang on. Uh, down Lima, Lima 8 now. So, and also the METAR shows up at the bottom. I also put it in the chat. Uh, it's, uh, we'll also do it again just, uh, to make sure y'all have it right in front of you. And it's basically all you have to do is the exclamation mark METAR and then whatever ICAO uh, airport you're at or need. And I do it and it, there it goes. Same thing for the route. There you go. So now you have the METAR and the route. The Chatham 3 swap and then we're going to be off to the J on the J42 to Robbinsville to the J22 to JFK on the Rub Robo Rob Robuck 3 arrival into Boston. Gives you the runways too. All right. So, um, let's go ahead. Come back here real quick. We'll show the loadout. And then we'll get into the other stuff on the other side of the ledger. There we go. Uh, we're running 159 people on this uh, Civil Reserve Air Fleet run craft. Uh, payload's 36,570 pounds already loaded. Fuel will be 18,035 uh, when we load that. Uh, cost performance today, cost index is 85. They're calling us to 33. We'll see what the plane calls when we get to that level. Uh, I'm not even showing any steps within it. Alternate is, and we're going to go now to the right side, is uh, Portsmouth, Kate Kilo Port, Kilo Papa Sierra Mike. So, uh, real quick, it's a 708 mile run by air uh, and by ground, 895. Here's the breakdown for the fuel. Our goal is to have 3,398 pounds of fuel on the ground in Portsmouth if we need to do the uh, uh, go to the alternate. Uh, <clears throat> so to do that, we plan 5.3 in our reserves. Okay. So, and I'm just writing that down while we're going down, and here's our block. This is what the uh, company will load us up with fuel with. Okay, here's our alternate, simple, direct, Lima, Whiskey, Mike, direct. Uh, fly. We're not even going to get above 10,000 feet. What do you expect on a 66-mile run? All right, sorry for that, folks. Had to get the good old nectar of coffee. Again, here's the routing. Here's our block times. Now we're estimating two hours, 15 minutes, but we're scheduled two and a half. Okay, so again, 159 people, which gives us 36.6 when you round it up on the uh, payload and takeoff weight of 146.0. All righty, so. And then we go into the flight plan. All right, folks, up here we'll hit the charts real quick. Uh, there we go. Again, here's our routing, what it looks like if you were to pull it up and look at it. Now, significant weather. Uh, pretty uh, active chart here. Okay, here you can see our route drawn in here. We've got a jet to the north, jet to the south. Uh Turbulence uh, to 41,000 feet. That's what we'll be in. Well, actually, no, we won't. But with jets like that, expect it to be possibly a bumpy ride, moderate to severe, 25 to 31, more north of us. So, oh, excuse me again. All right. Finally, let's hit our wind charts. Here's 34,000. You can see that jet reflected right here. Look at those winds, folks. Hopefully, they're directly on the tail and pushing us. So these are our winds. 
at 34. And if we're lucky enough to step up to 39, a little stronger to push us that way. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this portion of the uh, uh, departure brief. Going to go uh, get us back into uh, the cockpit here, and we're going to start going through the checklists. Let's go ahead and bring in the overlay as well. And Okay, so at the top, you'll see the overlay for Sim Toolkit, and down at the lower left, the uh, link to our team, our uh, Discord channel. So, all righty. So let's get into the checklists here real quick. Again, we're just going to accept the cockpit since it's been sitting here for a few minutes. Battery is on. That is this switch right here. Uh, standby power is here and guarded, both on and guarded. Uh, ground power is on. You can see that here. And when we click down, we make sure and turn our knob here to ground power. Uh, left and right IRS switches. We'll get those momentarily. We'll come back to that. Cabin utility and cabin IFE uh, are both on. Cabin IFE, both of these switches are on. Um, emergency exits are closed and on. Exterior lights as required. We need the uh, position lights. And we'll go ahead and turn the logo light on for advertising. And uh, finally, window heat is on as required. Probe heat is off. Anti-ice for now is off. Uh, engine hydraulic pumps. They should be in the on position. Electrics should be in the off. Fuel pumps all off. And we're going to do a cross-feed check here real quick should go light see how it's still kind of illuminated and it should extinguish and it's gone perfect test okay trim air on isolation valve open left and right recirculators in auto that are these two switches and finally, dun, 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 dun. Uh, packs are in the auto position so we can put some air into the plane. Uh, so now that takes care of making sure the basics are done. And while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and set us up. I thought I could run it up faster. And we'll leave it there since it's at 19. All right, so we're going to go all the way up to the top now we're gonna start in and uh, check everything so we're gonna uh, first off since it told us to get the left and right uh, IRS mode to nav first thing I want to do though is move this switch to status heading status what that'll do is tell us how long till it aligns then we come down to the IRS these are left and right IRS Align, nav, align, nav. Two clicks to the right. And then you see seven minutes. While we're here, we'll hit the devices real quick. Okay, I don't know if you hear the deedles. I can barely hear them at this volume level. Three green, oxygen's good, EECs are on, and the passenger normal. And the dome light is in off. Service center phone off. All right, so we're going to move all the way down. Clear that out because I don't know why it's not updating all of a sudden. Hang on a second. I just want to, I don't like blank screens. There we go. All right, so I've already sent the plan in here for us to pull up. So all we got to do is check position and this, and we're going to be a K, B, N. A. Hit that. Come down here. Today is the first. Now what I do is odd days. Um, <clears throat> I take the left. Even days I take the right. Same thing with ignition. Just the system I heard from somebody made sense. What the heck. Real quick here. Let's spin up some brightness. 
Hang on, let me get the other one. There we go. All right, so let's take that GPS, go back. Looks good. We'll punch it in there. And punch BNA there. Kilo, Bravo, Oscar, Sierra to there. And a company route is Kilo, Bravo, November, Alpha, Kilo, Bravo, Oscar, Sierra, zero, one, there. And you can always go to the next page. There they are. Okay, that is correct. Activate, execute. All right, flight number for today, we're going to go with our CH. Uh, what are we running with some Air Force? 9922. 9922. Okay, so we know a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and just click Progress. 848 without any runways or anything like that loaded in. We're going to come back real quick. I'm just going to go check it on some brief. 818, 708 to 895. Okay, looks good. And then we're going to come put in our runways. So we're departing B and A. Chatham 3. Wow. Which swap do I take? <laughs> That's kind of funny. And we'll do runway 31. Execute. Back to the route. Now it shows. Now sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We're showing a runway today. And over here, we're still 853. And still within ground distance and air distance, so we're good. Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and just put in our arrival, because runways can change en route. There's the Roebuck 3. Transition, I believe, was JFK. JFK. Execute. And again, still looking good. All right. So that takes care of a couple of steps here. Uh, took care of alignment. And we've right now uh, route performance-ish, November 1 and trim. So we got to get our performance in here. But we got to first load and fuel the plane. Okay, to do that, let me go back to the home page. When you come into the plane, this is what it looks like. What I do is go to ground services right off the back. Let's click chocks. Already got my forward door and cargo doors open. Come back, start servicing it. And then we're going to also fuel the plane. Now we've already loaded it. The breakdown looks like this. I did this all manually. You just click here. Uh, what you do is you click, uh, you'll put in how many men, click MF, how many females, click MF, how many children, and then click the enter button on it. <clears throat> and then put your cargo in. Pretty simple. Uh, fuel, 18035, 18035 on some toolkit. All right, so how do we load this? I've had a couple questions of this. You come back just to the main page of the, uh, hang on. You come right to the main page here after you've entered it here. Now to go to page two, you click there. To go to page one, you go there. And back will take you here. You'll see the fuel truck call. When it's green, he's not there. When it's red, he's there. And to test, all you got to do is go out. There he is, fueling us up. So, that's all we got to do, folks. Wow. 
I hadn't realized the music was still going muted. Sorry about that. Oh, well, sorry for those messages coming up, folks. All right, so we are aligned now. So what I'm going to do, let's go all the way back up to the top one, and let's move that. There we go. And we get our coordinates back up here at P, P, O, S. All right. Okay, so let's go back. And when he's done fueling, this will turn green. These numbers will match. Well, this will go away. So let's continue on like we did before so we don't, for, you know, run out of time here. The APU is going to stay off for now. So APU bleed is off. Um, altimeters are set already to 3016. Let's see if we've had a weather change. As of 1453, everything's still pretty much the same. 350 at 12, 10 miles visibility. Scattered layer at 1500, broken layer at 13,000, still overcast at 20. Temperatures remained about the same. And we still have, of course, the scattered rain. All right. And that was as of 15, 20 minutes ago. <clears throat> All right, so uh, left, when we're ready to start the APU, we'll turn the left aft pump on, hold the APU, and when the gen's available, turn it on, and then the APU bleed. All right, and seven, seven. K75 are still fueling. So we're going to let that happen here. We're not going to turn to flight directors. That's in the next uh, procedure. Uh, we're just waiting on the fuel. We're about 3,000 pounds away from getting filled up here. So uh, the big things to take away on this flight is it's about a two and a half hour run once we get airborne. We still got a little ways to go in the pre-flighting what we can do while we're waiting let's pop down here get our panels up we'll get all our panels ready with the lighting Okay, all our external lighting or interior lighting in here is done. Okay, COM-1 is on guard for, for POSCON. Unicom, 122.8. Uh, let's switch these around. So we have the actual guard that everyone's familiar with that has pilot's license, 121.5, and the other Unicom. All right, now we have our... Squawk, so that is one, five, okay, so we are squawked. Okay, so let's come back up here. We are done fueling and ev whoop, thinking a different airplane, sorry. And you can see the fuel truck is gone now. All right, so let's go home. We're going to stop the servicing. We'll come back and load passengers here in a minute. I'm going to catch up on the checklist here real quick to make sure nothing was missed. Okay, so the batteries are on the bus tie IRS we've done. Voice recorder. All of these we have done. Next page. Off, set, oxygen panel, set, landing gear. Flight recorders guarded, stall warnings passed, parking brake. Okay. Um, one thing I'm hoping that does not bite us in the butt here is uh, we're working on this right now. Um, when you come up for some reason with this new thing, your aircraft is so close to the uh, terminal. Um, now, you can push back, but it doesn't stop and I don't get that 
Um, so I don't know how to stop the pushback once you initiate it by pulling the parking brake off. So hopefully better pushback takes care of that. All right, so, <clears throat> or we're going to have a lot of troubles here. Okay, so checklists are caught up to the point we're at. Just making sure. Okay. All right, so we are to a point. Let's finish up our CDU. We have 590 pounds in our center tank, so we'll have to burn that down eventually. All right, so we're going to go to perf finish. And one more time, we're looking to put 18.0. Okay, click CFW. Again, our reserve was 5.3. Cost index, 85. And see, they're wanting to take us to 37. So we'll start with 33. And before we click accept, let's come back up to the top here. The average wind was 248 at 109. Wow. 248. Diagonal. One was it 09 or 49? 09. Click that in. I'm sure I can find these. I don't know where they are. So we'll click Execute. Next page. Okay. One thing I do have to do here, take off. Bear with me a second here. I'm getting something from the Acre Hours program. Uh, we're going to go off out of here with engines. 3-1, calculate. And apply. Landing. Yeah, we'll play that for now. May change. And just waiting. There we go. Update. This is the PFP information. Release. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up Topcat. Make sure things match up. Okay. Okay, so let's try A cars, take off data. Okay, so what we're looking at, TO2, okay, so what we're looking at is a TO2 departure, oh, what did I do, hang on, back, perf, and oh, I know what I did, okay, so we're TO2, Uh, 34 on PFP, 33, I'll go with 33. On the other one, uh, okay, and we're looking at, okay, climb two, we'll do. Next page, all right, winds are coming up, just got to, Three five zero at twelve. Okay, we'll plug that in up here. We're gonna go wet. Probably should are we run uh we'll go dry. <clears throat> and we're gonna go slash. 
Um, 316. Now, anyone out there watching, listening, please comment here or in YouTube when this video, if it gets over to YouTube, let me know how to put in the slope. I have I've tried a million different ways. I can't get the positive and the negative to work right here. So let me know, and I may have to dig into PMDG to see how that's done. Because this airplane is so close to PMDG, folks. Um, in some areas, it's actually exceeds but in some area PMDG exceeds it so again climb th two is our thrust once we're above 15,000 AGL uh, and we're under flaps one so once we well we're our, or once we're under flaps five um, so we're good there now let's go next put in our CG maybe why not uh, flaps one. I don't know why the CG isn't coming in. Okay, hang on a second. Always a way to find it. 25 one. Okay. That's the first time I ever had to enter that, folks. Okay. Now, what we're targeting here, 149, 151, 155. We're actually not far from that. I'm going to take the least of that one. We'll put 151 for sure here. And 155 here. Okay. Okay. Now that's giving us a trim of 5.5. There's our Mac. And there's what our engine should show when we do our reduced takeoff. All right, folks. So we send. OK. And close. Close. And minimize. Oops, I said minimize. Okay, so that takes care of, oh crud, come on, there we go, uh, the perf initialization N1, and we've got our trim. Uh, we've set and executed. All right, now one last thing I definitely want to make sure we do here. All right, we have started our ACARS program for Sim Air Force. And so that takes care of that. Now we're done fueling, so we can fire up the APU. So to do that, like I said, it says left aft uh, fuel pump turned on. Hold the APU for a couple of seconds all the way down. And things are going to start powering up here in a moment. Um uh, takes a couple seconds for the intake to open up and then for it to come on. And if I don't see that, there it goes, powering up. The EGT is going up. It'll go up somewhere between 8 and 5 or 6 and then roll back down to about somewhere between 6 and 4. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that, folks. All right. All right, so while we're waiting on it, uh, how many people here in the last uh, few days have, uh, uh, first off, I want to say thank you, Orb505, for the follow. We sure appreciate you joining us here at Flying with Mike. Uh, be watching for emails coming your way when we go live. So that way you can see where we're heading. And if you'd like, feel free to join in. We are on PauseCon today, folks. We are parked, if you're in X-Plane, at Bravo 10, the end of the uh, Bravo wing. So feel free to pick any other gate, and I'd love to fly with you. And for anyone else who uh, happens to be listening in, uh, and feel free to click follow. And like I said, you'll get an email when we're flying again. All right, so 
we've got the APU gen fired up so we'll click in here let's get the APU running and now we're starting to cool the aircraft warm the aircraft however you want to look at it same time let's disconnect from ground power which it never does here and we'll come over to here and say we said shut down double check and it shut down okay all right folks and DC voltmeter which is right up here we go up to gen so we can see how our voltages are going with the uh, amps and volts with the APU okay we're still showing the forward door and the two cargo doors open and we still have our two fuel pumps and uh, electrics in the uh, off mode all right, folks, that wraps up everything we need to do to, one, accept the cockpit and get ready to start boarding passengers. From here on, you can board passengers um, without a problem. And uh, at the end, we'll then do go through all the checklists that are over here. And believe me, there are a lot. And I found it funny because I went through all of the configs that you can do like you do in PMDG here. There was a simplified and there was a detail. I am in the simplified mode. And folks, there's a lot. A lot. So let's finish up the CDU here. And now we're going to kind of go through these kind of fast. Uh, okay, we'll test the oxygen. Well, let's do it from the other one. Flight directors on. Because there is a step we haven't done yet. Flight directors on. Auto throttle off. Now, they say take your indicated airspeed V2 plus 15. I usually go V2 plus 10. So 255 or 250. That would be a hell of a rotate. Um, even the Concorde wasn't even close to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, 155 is 165. They would want 170. I'll have to find any real Boeing 737 pilots just happen to be popping through and want to follow or want to let me know. Let me know if that's true. V2 plus 15 goes in your mock speed. I put V2 plus 10. Now we want our runway heading which is 316. Wait a minute, was that right? 316? Yes, 316. And we're going up to 33,000 with probably a immediate step climb to 37. And I can't get that right. There we go. Both flight directors are on. Auto throttle is off. Altitude set, fuel flow switch. Let's go ahead, reset. And uh, minimum spiral. That is on our EFIS pages. So what we're going to do, we already have 31.6 put in. We are on DH, I believe. Yep, so let's run that up to 100. Unless things get super bad there, it's, to me, that's the one I always like. Switch over to Barrow. Now, we're at an altitude of 535, well, almost 600. So we're going to run it up to 1,000. Okay, now, what I love about this plane, it's already done on the other side. Mm, love it. All right, traffic, we're going to turn off. We're going to bump this one up to 20. You kind of get a feel for what's coming in the departure brief. <laughs> so, all right, back over to here. We'll bump you up to 20. And all right, so landing gear lever is showing down. Let's get in the middle here. Here's your landing gear lever. Shock that wasn't up top. Okay, that was down. Uh, parking brake, that's right here. Make sure that's set. Again, you'll be pushing back if it's not. Unless there's a way to stop that. And I don't know how. Um, oh, that was next. Uh, speed brake lever. 
is this one make sure it's all the way up and down and the down detent thrust levers are closed and reversers are down uh, engine start levers those are these characters right here they are in cutoff and the parking brake again is set yaw dampers if aligned can be turned on and like it said we can start boarding passengers okay so we're gonna do the oxygen test real quick okay over here we'll do it better from the captain and first officer because if you look over there there's one there too all we gotta do you might hear the air you may not anyway we're just checking to make sure it breathes All right, passengers, uh, we're going back here. Make sure oxygen test set, clock set, nose wheel steering set. Okay, we can't do anything with those. Light test. All right, we're just going to uh, come down just a little. Okay, so that's what we're testing right here. So you test one, that's up. Two, to test is down. And all we're doing is checking to make sure the lights come on. While you're here, if you want, you can check all of them. And I recommend now is a good time to do your fire check. So, going to the left, all we're going to get are the two fault lights in the middle. Going to the right, all three will light up and yell at us. Okay, come over to here, and we're just making sure the squibs light up, and then the test. Okay, folks, so there's your fire protection check, which is actually done with the first officer. It helps us get going quicker. Standbys are checked, standby brake levers, down detent, reverse closed. We did that already. Flaps are set. No, they're set to zero and zero. Double check, zero or up, and they show up down here. All right, now, remember, idle cutoff, that is your fuel levers. Uh, engine start levers are in cutoff. Our VORs will need to make sure audio panel seat, dink, dink. And we're going to go right on into this one. Okay, checked. We checked the overheat. All of the APU is running. Emergency lights. Passenger signs at park. Window heat's on. Probe heat's off. Anti-ice off. Hydraulic panel set. Engine's on. Electric's off. Air conditioning panel set. Cabin pressurization. Letting's off. Ignition system. Let's go up top. Again, remember my motto. Today is the left. It's the odd day. Odd always comes first in the calendar. One, even, is the next day. So we just alternate back and forth. Okay, windows are in. Okay. Engine, oh, dang it. Engines are in auto. And these are your engine start switches. Uh, mode control set, EFA set, you tested your oxygen. A lot of this is repeat. That's tested, 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 checked. We're not going to set the uh, RTO cause, uh, for auto brake because we'll do that before we taxi. And all these are checked. And here it's just a repeat. Transponder set. And these are repeats. All right, so that's going to bring us into the before start checklist. Okay. All right, so let's first board the passengers. And I'm turning the volume up in my ear so I can hear the flight attendant. Okay. 
So that takes care of our before start checks. Basically, the flight deck door, we're going to keep it open so we can hear back there. CDU N1 IAS bugs are set, MCP set, we're ready for taxi. Push and start, actually. Okay. Oh, my music is still wanting to run for some reason. Oh. Okay, so. Yeah, pretty much... Uh, Right now, I haven't done the... Uh, okay, so we got everybody on board. That's what I wanted to hear. Hang on a second. I always forget these. And thanks for flying with Mike, if you heard all of that that the captain said. All right, now to answer your question there, Orb 505, and again, thanks for the follow. Is there no max altitude on this, SID, or are we just pretending we have clearance direct to cruise altitude? Well, pretty much on POSCON, since we don't have ATC, we can actually go direct to the cruise altitude. However, with that being said, and we've wrapped up the before start checklist, let's get into the departure brief and see what the chart actually says. So uh, hang on a second here. Uh, and pull that over. You should be able to see some brief now on the screen. Or some toolkit, sorry. Ugh, too many sim this, sim that. Oh, gets me all tongue twisted. All right, had to get another cup of coffee there. All right, so let's pull up first off. We'll show where we're at again. See if the rain's moved over the field and we're drying up. Looks like it might have. We'll pull out a little. A little south of the field, that's cool. But anyway, again, just remember we're parked up here. Three ones right there. All right, so here's our latest METAR. Still favors runway 3-1. Looks good there. All right, so let's bring up Navgraph. And we've got it centered on us here. And again, so you all know, if you want to join in on PauseCon, <clears throat> feel free. I'm showing an X-Plane at B10. It's kind of between B12 and B10. But anyway, feel free anywhere in this airport besides B10. Uh, put your plane. And we'll, you know... Do some flying together here on Mike. But anyway, again, looking at the airport, um, ATIS is 135.1. We'll give it a try, but I've got a feeling it isn't going to work. They seem to never want to work for me. And if for some reason Nashville comes up, we'll switch over to these frequencies. If not, we're on our own. And we'll keep it on the guard channels for POSCON per their SOP. <coughs> All right, so basically, again, let me just kind of zoom. We're parked here on the concourse. We're going to come out down to Lima, cross the ILS hold line to Lima 8, and then take off on 3-1. Actually, we'll probably hold it, the uh, ILS hold because of it being the way it is outside. We'll see when we get down there. Now, the Chatham 3 departure. Again, Nashville departure, should they come up, is 118.4. The airport's 599 feet above sea level. All right, looking at the charts. Initially, we're just going to fly runway heading 316. Um, and then on to assigned routing. In this case, OSCAR is where we start. So we'll go vectors to OSCAR. And there are, it appears to be, no altitude restrictions on this one, just to let you know, uh, Orb 505. Um, we're going to then track 065 up to uh, Chatham, C-H-A-D-M, and then 062 to swap, S-W-A-P-P. -P. And then uh, expect clearance to filed altitude within five minutes after departure. So there are no real obstacles uh, takeoff minimums look good, and uh, 
Nashville is 114.1. Uh, for initial climb, refer to inset, and then we already know 316, then vectors to Oscar. All right, so that wraps up the charts that we have for this. Let me pull that away. Here is the what the routing will kind of look like. Let me see if it'll let me zoom in. So we'll come out, make a right-hand turn, work our way over to Oscar, and then on to, onto the track. All right, and we'll zoom down. There we go. <clears throat> And we'll slide that away, I say, and kind of zoom it out here so get an idea where the rain is. Actually, it looks like Nashville was finally seeing the tail end of that rain, hopefully. This stuff bubbles up here. Anything in the blue, folks, like this guy, this guy, these two over here, and way up there, those are actually folks using Sim Toolkit. And you can also set this up for, um, nope, not that one, uh, the different uh, online, the big one, VATS, MIVO, FS Cloud, Pilot's Edge. These three I've never used, uh, really don't plan to, especially Pilot's Edge. Uh, but VATS, from time to time, we do. So go to here. And then again, you see all the who all is flying. Oh, there's a couple down here too. But it's any of these blue airplanes you see out here. All right, so let's pull this away. That is our departure brief. One last thing I do want to go over uh, real quick here is the V-speeds. And I'm just really conscious of making sure I get us back on that the V-speeds, again, are going to be uh, 148 for our V1 setting, 14, oh, I'm sorry, 151 for rotate, 155 for the V2. All right, and did it? I did not see it. maintain 4,000. Let's pull it back up here. I will always say blind. Oh, top out to 24,000. Thank you, Orb505. Totally missed that over there on the right-hand side. Well, we'll go ahead and just climb out. It's really, unless ATC is here to get us lined up with other things, it's kind of, you know, we'll just go ahead and plan our climb on up to 33,000. And in five minutes, well, we'll be well past that. So hopefully, let's refer to it that way. Hopefully, we'll be past it. But thanks, Orb505, for keeping me on my toes. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me check. Whoops, wrong one. Always love click when I click the wrong page. And that and that. Okay, so that's all set. All right, so with that, let's get started with the push and start. The first thing I'm going to do, if you're in X-Plane, better pushback is just that, better than the pushback that comes with the airplanes, comes default. Uh, we're going to go, oh, where's my white, yellow? All right, I am going to have to look outside the plane because something's confusing me here. And that's not real hard to do sometimes. Oh, okay. I see what I'm doing. All right. I, I, like I said, it's not real hard to do sometimes. Okay, so let's try this better pushback again. All right, so we'll go to here. And we'll turn him right here. Of course. 
and we'll go right to there. Okay, so you just left click. That sets it where it's at. All right, Captain, got the directions. Let me know through the menu when you're ready. Wow, that guy always comes on loud. Sorry for that, folks, if he was loud to you all. Um, so we got our pushback plugged in. We're going to go ahead and get him coming. It takes a few minutes. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. So he'll be here shortly. So let's go on with uh, the, uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, push back and start. So now we're going to go up to the top, move the uh, electric B to on. Fuel pumps on. We're going to keep the center pump on until we hit the runway. Uh, off, I mean, sorry. Any collision light, we'll go ahead and before we do anything else, I always forget. Okay. Transponder is needed. Parking brake by ground. Okay. All right. Looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. So let's get the anti collision light on. Auto throttles. They say to arm now. We do that at the runway with the uh, auto brakes. And we're ready to push when he is. And I think our door is closed now. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. There it goes. I only like to hear them sometimes. Now, we're not turning the wing lights on till we're almost to the runway. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toes connected. Bypass bends inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. And I think we're ready to go. So let's go ahead. Let's do it. Here he goes. Here comes the pushback. Light him up. All right, so for engine, okay, so we've got that taken care of. Engine start. Let's go back up top. Fuel pumps are on. We're set for an ignition. Packs off. And then uh, we're going to again use left ignition. And we're going to start number two first when it gets to uh, 17%. In between 17 and 25%, we're going to kick the uh, engines the fuel levers to idle so to do that let's kind of switch out so you get a better view of that all right so there's our start switches let's go to ground and you can see them spooling here you got your uh, start valve and oil lit up she's up to 10 14 and we can go to idle anytime. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, low oil pressure. Okay. Back to four. Oop. And I want to let you be able to see. Let's try with W. As it keeps spooling up, when it hits uh, 50, the uh, start switch should go back to uh, auto. There it goes. And eventually the light goes out. Starter cutout uh, has occurred. And we're just waiting for it to stabilize. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Just getting checklist items. Not starter cut out. Okay, that's all I had to announce. Okay. All right, let's get that parking brake like he asked. And we're set. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. While he's doing that, let's go ahead, back to four, and move number one to ground. And we're gonna watch our engines. A little further down, there we go. This one's the one we're watching. When it hits 17, we can start moving them up. Okay, move it up to idle. And any time now, there goes the EGT up. So we got a light off. Everything's climbing. Oil pressure is up. And again. 
in, we'll watch. At or around 55 is when it moves back to auto. There it goes to auto, starter cutout complete. There it is. All right, let's go ahead and disconnect. And da, 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 da. we have the engine started. Um, going on from here, we'll move. Well, let's wait for him to say the bypass pins out. And we start. And we're disconnected. disconnected. Signal on pin on the left. Take it easy and have a safe flight. All right. That's what we want to hear. All right. So we got to get generators one and two online. One, two. Now we can turn that uh, hydraulic pump on. There we go. Um, a sieve. I'm going to do it. The, I'm doing it the hard way, folks there and probe heat on we're going to go ahead and turn the yaw damper on now okay any ice engines engines got to remember the airplane i'm in they're up here when you fly too many airplanes that's what happens packs to on Isolation valve to auto, and it is, and APU bleed off, gens, and APU off. Okay, let's come back down, take a look. Okay, we did make sure we, oh, I know we already did. Missed one thing, we want to go to continuous. Okay. All right, so let's go down this checklist real quick. Wing ice is on, engine, oh, ice is not on for the engine, or wing, but it is for the ice. Auto for the packs, auto for the isolation valve, APU is off, we're on continuous, fuel switches are. Uh, ground equipment's clear, flap levers we need to set and check our flight controls. Flaps again are being set to one. They're in transit, and let's bring the flight controls up somewhere there. Come on, mouse. Oh, boy. Okay. Left, right, left, right. Hang on. And there is one other place you can go, system. And you'll see them there. We'll go here. Scroll down so you can see them. This is what the pilots and all will rely on. Elevator. And a rudder. And we'll kind of spin them around. Okay, I'm going to come over to this one coming down. That's before takeoff. Okay. All right. And that, folks, takes us to flaps to takeoff, taxi lights on, runway turn, turn off, lights as requested or as required. Flight levels checked. We're not going to blank. All right. And we're set for takeoff. Holy mackerel. And we did that all in an hour and 11 minutes. Put that back to engine. Taxi lights. And flaps are at one. And here we go. All right, so Nashville, we're going to be taxiing here on the ramp to taxiway November and then over to uh, I'm sorry Lima and then Lima 8 to 3 1 and we'll turn our timer on on the runway we've got the first officers already turned on seven minutes for the pushback yeah he's really good Dave uh, he does amazing um, man 
and he's even getting me to where I may even get an Airbus, and I'm not a big fan of Airbus. But uh, watching that A320 and uh, Microsoft, that is yesterday, especially into uh, somewhere in the Middle East, uh, out of Bahrain. That was just phenomenal scenery, but that I've already known about it. L8. Okay, so now we're on Lima 8. As soon as we clear this intersection, should be coming up to the ILS hold line if this is if this is painted as it should. It does uh, is that the ILS hold? Nope. Where is the ILS hold? Okay, it's not 100%, but it's not bad. Now, X-Plane, what keeps me going here is the scenery, much better than FSX. Uh, I don't fly prepared, never dabbled into it. I just kept doing FSX because, uh, one, I finally got used to it. I got a new computer way back when that really did a good job uh, system resource-wise, and I didn't get a lot of those... Uh, crash the desktops so I just stayed with it um, but all right so we're coming up to the actual hold line here uh, so let's uh, first off this is one of those features I don't like where it turns off my anti-collision all right so let's go through the before takeoff checklist here so I can try my best to Oh, get into the air here on X-Plane. I sure wish I had my 20 years with FSX here to make it look better. But it, am I on the... Uh, oh, yeah, there's the runway. Okay. All right, so before takeoff ch checklist, make sure engines are in. The engine start switches are in continuous, and they are auto brake. We're going to set that to reject. Oh, we're taxiing. Sorry, folks. Just noticed that. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, uh, where were we? Yeah, auto brake, uh, auto throttle to arm while we're here. Runway turn off lights, uh, they're going to stay on. Um, okay, only two switches. Um, ATC, oh yeah, we got to get our squawk. It is 1506, that's good. And heading bugs, runway heading. RNAV, VNAV, setup as on. Doink. Doink. They are armed, and we're not going to blank the lower A cam. <clears throat> okay, let's make sure everything's accomplished over here. So for the takeoff, um, let me back up here. Did we have a before takeoff? Uh, I think it was just before taxi. Okay. So we're going to make sure we're on the right runway. That's a very important thing to do. Uh, all you have to do is look at a Com Air flight out of Lexington to learn that one big time. Strobe lights will go on as we enter the runway. Other lights when we're on the runway, transponder is set. Um, to TARA, and we'll get them on the ECAS here. We'll do that before we forget. They are set. Weather, oh, we're gonna turn that off on this one. We're gonna use terrain over here. Well, oh, I never turned it off, that's why. Okay. And we got the weather radar, which won't show, very rarely does it ever show anything here. Um, thrust res, now they say take it up to 40%. I go to 60% and I'll show you why. When I go to 60%, that's going to put this blue, uh, this indicates you're where your throttles are. Easy to look over and say 60, line, and it lines up here. They go to 40, I go to 60. You know, do what you want there, folks. Um, but it's just something easy for me to look over and say, okay, we're good, let's go. Um, and next page. Then we'll click toga when we're stable, rotate uh, at VR, and pitch to 15 degrees at positive rate. We'll bring the landing gear up. Once we're above 400, we'll start retracting flaps at the proper time. 
at 400 feet roll mode will uh, go into and verify and then afterwards like I said we'll bring the flaps and slats up probably around 2000 or so when we get above the speeds then we'll kick the autopilot on and it's clear sailing from here it's clear as mud to everyone I'm sure okay so we got that set I'm gonna kind of turn this because I got a feeling it's gonna glare all right so Nashville traffic reach 18 taking runway 31 for departure and one real quick recap 148151155 for our V speeds coming down on our throttle flaps are set to one green stave trim thank you for missing that mic let's set that to 5.5 okay which will never work right in this for some reason departure briefing given captain's cabin is secure mcp set transponder is set strobe lights will come on landing lights will come on and we'll do the after takeoff check once we're out on the runway all right and here we go heading out to the runway and for the strobe lights folks if you're not familiar with 737s they're on the same switch with your nav lights all the way up and i really do like uh the uh um Zebo here. I mean, it, I mean, you could not have gotten a better aircraft that is almost PMDG, if not a little better in some areas. It's got some work in some other areas, but uh, overall, I don't have many complaints about it. Other than six months with X plane, and I feel like a beginner still. Probably because technically I am with x-plane okay so let's turn the timer on again remember we're gonna throttle up I'm gonna go to six or sixty percent just makes that little triangle in between here makes it simple for me I try to keep things simple in the cockpit I used uh, from version two. Oh wow yeah uh, I know a lot of people left uh, some came back with prepared um, I actually left at the same time you probably did when they abandoned it. Tried X Plane 6, I believe it was, and I thought this was flat out horrid. Months later, X Plane 8 came out with this majestic scenery that they had. And then, um, but I stayed with FSX, upgraded my computer, things went great. PMDG saved the day with FSX. I didn't jump to um, prepared and then I started feeling like um, I wanted to go to the new sim but my computer that has FSX good to go on it would not probably do a good job so I bought a new computer thought about hey let's try streaming I mean I watch these guys why can't I well, you know, I've been doing that also for six months, and uh, it's it's challenging. I will say it's not as easy as it looks sometimes. Although anyone can do this, it's it can be challenging at times. Uh, forgetting what's on your screen. Thank God for this laptop, even though it's not the greatest. It it helps me to see that. Um, but it it does help. So, but anyway, that's enough about me. Let's talk about Zebo and getting it into the air. So we're going to 60. Whoops, went too far. Let's get lined up here. Yeah, I got 10,000 feet of runway, so I'm going to stabilize and punch it. Okay, here's the hard part for me, keeping it straight sometimes on the runway. 80 knots. 80 knots. And the sloping in X-Plane is phenomenal. One day I may try Luca. One day. V1, rotate. OK. 
Okay. Positive, positive rate. rate. Gear up. Get her over here to 316. 400. There's 400. I don't know what it means by roll mode. And set to trim. 1,000. All right, we're going to go ahead, go autopilot. Heading select for now. As you can see, I kept the flaps out to be safe. And off. Okay. All right. And as soon as we cross up, we're going to go to 240. One thing I am going to do, well, two things. Well, no, for now, two things. All right. We're going to do... Oh, wait. Flaps up. Auto brakes off. Landing gears off. I know that's most of the checklist here. Let's get turning. What I'm going to do is set this to 240. Let's see if I can get away with it that way. Yay. Execute. That's going to make it climb. Well, what it's doing, it's going to keep me under what a lot of ACAR systems will then begin to yell at you if you uh, exceed the uh, 250. All right. Gonna go to forty. And I forgot to turn the landing lights on. Dang it. Ugh. That's thanks for flying with Mike. You never know what you're gonna get. Let's get up there. We'll go ahead and turn them on now. And I don't know why there's only two. There's gotta be a reason for it in the config, and I just have to find it. Okay. We're gonna go ahead. And turn on course. There's 8,000. Five minutes in, we're cleared up. We're in the first layer. After takeoff checklist while we're turning. Okay. Lights are on. Did all of that. Okay. Flaps up. VNAV autopilot on. Auto brake set landing gear is off. Like I said, let's go back. Do we have one? Climb cruise at or above 10,000, which we just reached. Let's get those. Uh, oh, I didn't even put them in their seatbelts. Boy, I'm a really good captain. They love me. Okay, and transition level will set and verify the altimeters and then wait for the top of the set. All right, folks, we are on our way. One last one to check, and that is this one. Air conditioning and pressure set. Uh, we'll turn the start switches at transition level. Landing gear is up and off. Auto brakes off. Up, no lights. Altimeters set. And we'll get rid of those. And I'm sure a few flight crews would love for that to happen. We're at four degrees. I'm going to go ahead and use the wing ice for now to be safe. And here we go, folks. Through that layer, let's take a look outside. And five. 
five. Guess what? I'm forgetting the lights. Okay. Make sure everything's in place. Lights off, off, off. Okay, 12,000, and we're slowly reaching our altitude. All right, folks, there you go. Good look at the uh, Sky Team 737. Uh, waiting on the transition level of 18,000 to set our um, altimeters into uh, uh, standard mode. And uh, two hours from now, we hope to be descending into Boston. Uh, so for now, sit back, kind of relax as best you can. If you got a plane and you're able to get on PazCon, that's where we're flying. Hope to see you up here. Uh, I'm going to just do a check I haven't done in a while. Okay, no ATC. Sometimes the Northeast does come up here on PazCon like it does on uh, VATSIM. So uh, we'll kind of watch. And don't be surprised to see the plane start porpoising. That's one of my pet peeves here. And for now, let me get her on. We'll hit LNAV so we don't blow through our first fix, as I was about to. We're going to stretch out here a little bit. There we go. Alrighty, so that way we can see traffic ahead of us. Um... Uh, and you all tell me, which view do you like? From the captain's seat or from the middle here? In the, I think there is. Let's take a look. I've always wondered. And that may be something. I know PMDG has it. Let's see. Alright, so we should be at the end. Uh, there's, I guess. I guess that's the instructor seat? Or jump seat? I don't know. Never been able to ask that question. Haven't seen inside of a 737 in many years. So, All right, we just crossed 18,000 and uh, just set the uh, barometric pressure, hit the st STD button so we go to standard and uh, we're rolling out on course. Let me set my have display here correctly for just in case folks we are on our way so hang on let's get the in-flight entertainment queued up and hopefully it's entertaining for you we can always switch to a different station if need be Currently, we run uh, most of our flights on Epic Station here with Pretzel Rocks. Uh, the song up is Far Beyond Eyes uh, by Big Giant Circles on their contingency, whatever they call that here on Pretzel Rocks. So hopefully that's not overbearing. If it is, let me know. We can turn it down a little further.
And I'll tell you, one of the pet peeves I have with X-Plane is this porpoise effect. Um, I can't seem to find how to stabilize climbs. FSX, man, they're dead on. Trim, you don't ever really have trouble with it. Uh, but here, again, that's FSX. Here on X-Plane, man, it is sometimes an outright booger to try to get this plane to one climb and stay on speed, as you can notice here. We're uh, 305 set, and we're down at 285, and you wonder why it porpoises. But again, Orb 505, we thank you for following us. Red Dan uh, came along yesterday. We were going to stream yesterday from uh, Nashville over to Mid-America. That's where I work as a firefighter, public safety, and uh, do some training. Uh, just to get some things ironed out with that autopilot so when we do tackle the MD-82, it's, it's not blowing through it. Uh, funny story yesterday I shared when I had so much trouble with the MD-80 yesterday or on the Nashville flight. I just flew it from Kansas City to Nashville and uh, I blew right through the uh, localizer. So I'm, and I'm in broken skies, 600 feet, rain. I mean, it was downright all out IFR there. I had to turn to KVOC that ticks me off when I have to do that. And when I came around, we were still fast. And that's on me. I should have dialed it down. I'll give it that. But he, when I watched a video on how to do an ILS in the MD-80 and X-Plane, even the guy doing the video blew through it. And he flew from Cleveland to Columbus. Blew right through it. Couldn't figure out why. Went around, reset like I ended up almost crashing on my go around. But anyway, he came around and regained the ILS. It was just amazing that it's that hard in X-Plane. It's a piece of cake in, uh, in, in uh, FSX. Can't speak for the new one, don't have it. But uh, I would hope Microsoft is still running the same way, but who knows? As I understand Microsoft's new flight sim, Microsoft is part owner and some other conglomeration is the one that actually did it. I don't know how that worked. I know that's how it used to be, but it was all Microsoft. I mean, everything from so, so, but yeah, it was really bizarre to even see the guy teaching me how to do it below right through. So I'm going to go silent. Uh, my wife's on a call. She works from home for WashU. And uh, if she talks anything finance with students or anything related to the students, that has no place over Twitch. So y'all enjoy the flight, and we'll be back more here shortly. And just for those curious, oh, in about 400 or so miles, we'll start our, uh, uh, actually, about 300 miles. We'll do our arrival brief. We'll set the FMC up for the arrival. Actually, we'll go ahead and do that now, because I'm going to just do a quick check here at Sim Brief. Current flight. I said current flight. Thank you. All right, so 290 at 7, 10 miles visibility, and this is as of, uh, we're coming up on a new METAR, so 
overcast 500 feet. So folks, this could turn into an auto land uh, with 10 miles visibility, we'll see. Outstanding, love when we get to shoot auto lands. I think that is one of the most interesting things out there that the airplane can actually land itself. Of course, the auto brakes come on and the only thing the pilot has to do is bring up the reversers. Amazing. And 2950 up in Boston. Looks like they've got some drizzle uh, occasionally down to five miles visibility. So yeah, this could be like we did into Auckland uh, a week or two ago. Uh, we flew a full auto land approach. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and start dialing this up. Top of descent is 487 miles. Boston, arrival. ILS 33. Now, do I want Ben? Or three? Yeah, 33 three left. Is that the one that's the farthest out? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll fly Ben. Where's JFK? Oh, that's where we start. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. So yeah, we will do Ben. Execute. Do a legs check here. You know what? While we're doing all of this, let me uh, pull up Sim Toolkit for y'all. Uh, okay, so Sim Toolkit should be up in, on the screen now for you. Um, what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to pull up Navgraph. Here is the, uh, well, let's first start with the Roebuck 3. Now we're going to do a, a better briefing in about 300 or so miles but at fee fe triple x we got to be at 23,000. so what we're going to do we're just going to go back and check our altitudes and it shows whoa is there a speed restriction that i missed no okay all right not sure why we have a speed restriction. Um, okay, and then Ruse, that looks good. Jody. Okay, so let's just kind of step ourselves down. Eleven thousand at Jada. Oh, are we not going to Jada? I would hope so. Pro V Jody. I'm glad I did this. Jody, Jaina. Jaina is eleven. from here. Um, Ansley, A-N-S-L-Y. 
why. SLY. Oops. Sorry about that. S L Y. Okay. Back up here. That's eight thousand. Is that a heart? Is that a fixed eight thousand? Yes, two forty. Is it 250, 240? a couple more fixes here. Barry. Okay, so we got it all plugged in. We're gonna do one fuel. Tells me my center tanks are empty. Okay, got those taken care of. All right, folks, we are set. All right, uh, not a problem. Orb 505, thanks for the uh, information and that catch on the departure. I missed that. Uh, glad we kind of started setting up this arrival now. Uh, because we had to add some fixes. That seems to be the norm here lately. Put that there. There we go. <clears throat> so we're set now. Let's see how this progresses out. 400 miles to top of descent. And should end up with 7.7, .7, which is good. Uh, still above our reserves. We're good to go. Enjoy dinner. We'll see you maybe at uh, top of descent.
but thanks for flying with Mike. And thanks for the uh, follow as well. Let you see. Now, just a little heads up going into Boston today ought to be fun. Hopefully, not as bad as what we had going into Nashville a few days ago, where the aircraft flew through the uh, ILS. And the weather is going to be pretty much the same as that day. 600 to 500 overcast. Rain, 10 miles visibility there in Boston. I think it was 3 miles, 4 miles in Nashville. I can't remember off the top of my head. So yeah, it's going to be a fun day. I am right now openly confessing more than likely an auto land, which I used to love doing at PMDG on FSX. So I'm glad I get to do it here on uh, Zemo. And I shot one, oh gosh, into Auckland a week or two ago, and it was phenomenal. I just, I mean, computers, it's not phenomenal, but when you think about a real plane flying it right down to touchdown, flaring, all of that that's in involved with it, amazing. Uh, just amazing what we could do and so we're gonna hop back in the cockpit here get down to the right view and uh, set our heading up to the right numbers six eight And currently we're about 229 miles out. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get into the arrival brief. And for that, we are going to need some toolkit. Hang on a second. All right, some toolkit, where are you hiding? There you are. All right, so some toolkit's up. All right, so we've already programmed our FMS for the 3-1 arrival into Boston on the Rubik 3 arrival out of the Transitions JFK. So let's take a look here. Okay, now the weather is as of 1504 Zulu, which was an hour and, whoa. I'm sorry. Yeah, 15, uh, 54. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're almost an hour and 15 minutes old here, so we'll have to go with it, folks. That's what we have. 
So 2907, 10 mile visibility. Again, overcast right here at 500 feet, IFR conditions. Temperatures 5, dew points 4, and altimeter 2950. So that is going to put us on the runway 33 left uh, approach. Here we're going to fly the JFK transition for Rubik 3. All right, so let's bring up Navgraph. And we have the Rubik 3 pulled up. And uh, well, real quick, let's zoom in up here. We'll go through it and then show it on the map. All right, so the arrival ATIS is 135.0. Airfield is 19 feet above sea level. And of course, we transition at 18,000. Now, the routing from Rubick. Excuse me, folks, for that yawn. I did not mean to do that in your ears. Uh, on the track of 84 out of Rubick, we go to Provi, then 075 to Jody, then assigned uh, runway transition, which is must be how our ILS. FMS was set up because it was wrong to some degree. Now for 3-3 three, three left, that'll be this last portion here. So from Jody, Judy, J-O-O-D-Y, we're going to track 7-5 to Jaina. Then zero, whoa, there goes the plane into whatever the heck it's trying to do. Thousand ago. All right, folks, hang on. Let's get the autopilot back on here. Get ourselves back down. You saw what I saw, didn't? Uh, if you didn't, folks, the airplane just violently went. Like you see here, it's not violent, but it went right, uh, left. That's when I caught it. That's when it would have gone straight down and crashed. I hate this about SIBO. I'm glad I was able to watch that. All right, so uh, we'll track to Ansley, Barry, and then BB Brog. Well, we're going to be coming off at Barry. All right, so let's pull back. Let's see exactly what that looks like and our altitude restrictions. Right out here, folks, is what I watch to see if it violently does that. Oh, that ticks me off. So we're going to come off Kennedy, JFK, 115.9, to news to FE triple X, and that we have to be at 23,000. From there to Ruse, Ruzi, there we have to be 23 to 21. Allen, above 17. Banky, above 16. To Rubeck, and that's where our instructions started. There we got to be between 19 and 12,000, and at 260 knots. From there we go to Provi, again above 11,000, to Judy, J O O D Y, and then continue to Jaina. Now Jaina we got to be uh, 11,000 at 250, Ansley 240 at 8,000, and Barry. Uh, 220 between six and seven thousand. From there, we're going to go direct to, to Ben B E Triple N, and that'll get us on the ILS. So that's basically what we're doing on this part of the approach. Now let's get on to the ILS. All right. Now across the top, these are the frequencies. If ATC comes up, um, you can kind of see I'm seeing it right now on my laptop. The recovery. Whew. Let me check one thing. Air speeds are fine. Okay. All right. So, Boston approach, tower, ground. Now, what we're going to really concern ourselves with is we need uh, both ILS is set to 110.7 on a final approach course or localizer course, 330. Now, at Nemo, Nimoy, we need to be at 1,500 feet or on the glide slope, or we go around. If we're not at 1500, or we're not on the glide slope, we go around at that point. 
The next point will be 216 feet MSL, which is on our gauges. That's actually 200 feet above sea level. Oh, I'm sorry, above ground level. My bad. Touchdown zone is 16 feet. Airport's 19 feet. Now, God forbid, we got to do a missed approach. We're going to climb 1,500 feet, then climb right to 3,000, going out on the Boston VOR. Boston is identified Bravo Oscar Sierra. The frequency is 112.7. And we're going to go out on the radio 030 to Waxen, which is about DME 14 miles from Boston, and hold. Or as I like to add at the end, as instructed by ATC. Every time I see the plane dip now, I'm sorry folks, it pulls my attention away. Um, again, transitions are 18,000, which will well be below by then. Here is our routing from Ben, Coaz, Nemoy, Arduk, and in. Shows our altitude progression. To 1500 feet by here we should be grabbing the glide slope along the way now we should hang on here okay you're in the turn okay sorry folks my nerves are up again uh alsf2 for the approach lights pappy's on the right side here is what our missed approach pictorially looks like straight ahead to 15 right turn to 3000 intercept 030 off of Boston to wax and for those interested here is our uh, minimums which right now we're above and finally once we're on the ground here's the runway we're landing on 33 left my goal is to get past and usually that's not a problem getting past the two runways try my hardest to come off in November I'll be happy if I come off here if everything works right and then we're gonna taxi to the E gates which I don't have pulled up hang on a second let me get the parking gates and we will be aiming for the E gates back in here so again, my goal is November, Zulu, or Lima. Alrighty, folks, and that's where I'm hoping to come off at. If, for some strange reason, uh, I come off at Foxtrot, we'll just take it to either Bravo or Alpha, and then work our way around. Now, final points for the uh, arrival brief. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea where we're at. Uh, JFK is right there. Anyway, uh, let me pull these away real quick. I said real quick. There we go. Okay, so sim uh, V rep. We're auto landing and we're going to compute. So, what we're going to plan here, folks, V-Ref of 147, an approach speed of 154 to 160, and let's uh, do this, and I'm just using the uh, top cap program I have here, I'm going to go wet, and it comes. I screwed up. Hang on a second. Uh, I just want three, one. Hang on. I got way too much in my report. There we go. Now let's do it the easy way. ACARS, just to make sure, should match up 2952. 
Okay. If we do this like we're supposed to. I always love saying it that way. Uh, we should take up, uh, we need 6,400 feet of runway. So if I do this right, the auto land lands like it's supposed to, we should have 4,000 feet of runway to go. I say that cautiously, folks. All right, so. And uh, there we got that lined up, but anyway. Close. And what we're gonna do, so there we go, folks. We're now 116 miles out from our top of descent. And uh, let's see if any change in the weather has occurred. Uh, oh, we got new weather. 270 at five, overcast 900. So it's come up slightly, five degrees uh, Celsius 250, 2950 on the altimeter. Little better, but we're going to still plan the auto land, turn it off if we uh, come in. So let's come over here. I'm going to drop down just enough to get this and come down, zoom in, and that's set up on our descent. Okay. We'll leave it up for now. Get all of our... Got way too many mice at work here. Oh, oh, I wish I knew a computer engineer close by here that could come in and say, Oh, we can get this set up for you in a heartbeat. <laughs> all right, so... 37,000 and our airspeed and everything is a little bumpy up here. Uh, we were expecting that, I do believe. Let's double check our SIGs. Out to the north, we have a uh, light chop to 41,000. Jet stream is not far to the north. So, yeah. All right, so back to the flight plan. As we work our way towards our top of descent, we'll just kind of set it here. 97 miles out. So, folks, uh, like I said, we are planning to uh, shoot the uh, Auto Land ILS Cat 3 runway 33 left off of the bend transition. I believe we're talking. 20 miles. Then uh, is 15 miles. So off the uh, uh, localizer, India Lima, India Papa, 110.7. All right, keep that handy. And at 110.7. All right, so while we're working our way in, Okay. And folks, to do the uh, full ILS one one, you know, cat uh, three arrival, both have to be set up. As do. Uh, oh crap! I forgot it again. 3.30. As are your courses. Eh, I went the long way. Oh well. Okay, so we are set up now. And then, once we get on the localizer, <clears throat> goal is 4,000 feet. Uh, that should be below the local uh, glide slope. Glide slope should. So basically what we'll do, let's come over to this one. Kind of zoom in a little, give you a little idea of what we're going to see. So we're going to see the localizer show up down here, the glide slope here. Uh, once we're on the localizer, it'll say localizer up here. Glide slope will be down here in white. 
so long as it's up here till we grab it then it'll go active like you see LNAV FNAV path I also want to be at 220 preferably a little slower probably 210 to 200 slowing might even set to 180 so we're slowing and then we're gonna come down and uh, let it do its thing uh, hopefully uh, Hopefully it'll be just like Auckland and we come in with a very smooth, very, to me, amazing, to y'all, boring, because you're not flying it. But you know what? You may not be flying this in the real world. Uh, you will want the aircraft to do it <clears throat> uh, by rules. But again, right now, you would be allowed to fly it. But if it dropped below 500, you would have to let the plane All right, so, again, nice thing about the sim. You can do things you can't do in the real world because real people, real cargo is behind you. All right. So now we're getting to 40. Now in PMDG, you know, you could start down here. Uh, first altitude restric restriction is 23,000. What we're going to run is the descent checklist. Okay, so we've uh, standard, we set that. All right, so landing altitude verified, system annunciation checked, VNAVs checked, or VREFs in. We've got our set, navigation radio set, and the auto brake. We'll get that set here as well. And uh, there we go. So let's head over here. Auto brake three. Okay. And I don't think I ever pulled them off continuous like I should have. My bad. All right. So we're at 35 again. When I said uh, under 20, that's when I'm going to go to the descent page and actually pull it up here. And I'll click descent now. This uh, set up for 23. And fasten your seatbelts below 15, landing lights at 10. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so we are where I can click Descend now. Oh, dang it. Don't know. Oh, I know why I paused. Oh, stupid me. There we go. Let's see if she starts descending. There she goes. And I find pulling my throttles. Now I've got a Satec X52 Pro. By pulling mine back, that seems to help a lot. However, it seems to bite me in the butt as I get in closer. So I have to kind of watch things. Again, we're setting up for our, we're now descending. And I don't know why it's asking for drag. We're under the numbers. All right. And we're descending to 23,000 by FE triple X right there. V ref set. We'll pull it back up here once we get past uh, Jaina. That way we can see it. Make sure we'll do that right now. 1107, 1107. We're coming down. 
Uh, Boston traffic uh, reach 18, leaving flight level 370 for arrival, Boston 31, uh, ILS. And I want to check something while we're doing this. Do that. Do that. And nope, Boston is not up. So here we go, folks. Okay, we're at 20. Let me check my UI for messages. Still no messages. Oh, they're down. Oh, I hate when they do that. <laughs> Back to this. Back up here. All right. 20 miles to that top of descent. We'll see if that's where we grab it. If not, we'll... Do it the old-fashioned way. And we'll sit in the middle here so you guys can see everything. Okay, we're 112 miles from end of descent in Boston. Uh, at about 15 miles where we should start coming down. One thing I do want to make sure is still happening. We're still there, okay. And over here, hi folks, those of you uh, lurking out in the chat area, if you like what you see, want to be uh, part of the uh, stream, or uh, just want to see where the heck is Mike going to be flying to next, click the follow button. A uh, couple of things happen with that. The big thing, though, for me, lets me know you, you kind of like what I'm doing. You, the, the content seems pretty good. But more importantly, lets you know with an email when I go with the live stream where and where we're headed. As uh, you would see Wednesday, my goal is to go from Perth, Australia up to Singapore. We'll be flying for FedEx in a 747. Uh, so when we go live, you'd get that email, know when we're online to watch, or better yet, join in and fly along. We try to fly on PazCon, but you know, that sim occasionally is where we end up. Uh, so right now, we should start a descent to 11,000 feet, I hope. If not, I'm going to make it happen. Here shortly. And it's this little, it's kind of hard sometimes to see unless I zoom in, but right where my cursor arrow is pointed, that is the uh, top of descent from flight level 230. It's kind of neat. I don't remember seeing that in PMDG, but it uh, could have been, and I just never paid attention. But it's kind of neat. It's also in the 747. Uh, just like the 737-800 that uh, Zebo modified, the 747-400, a group of guys have been modifying that for a couple of years into a pretty decent aircraft, folks. Okay, we are crossing that now. I should see a top of descent. We'll give it just a smidge longer. Okay, it's not going down. We know how to make that happen. There it goes, starting a descent. Go to VNAV, and there we go. All right, so she is now descending to, oh, uh, what are we descending to at 11,000? Uh, Jaina, and then it's 8,000, and then on to 4,000. <clears> so here we go, folks. Now, if you're not familiar with flying with Mike, uh, anything and everything can happen from here on in. So enjoy the flight i am not a commercial pilot however i do have a private pilot's license well that i would right now if i wanted to get back into the air would need to go back through ground school get a medical the last time i flew with a real airplane was 1985. yeah i'm an old 
I'm an old guy. So, uh, but yeah, I did log about three, 250, 300 hours at the university, Ohio University and Wright State University. Uh, so I have flown a real plane. I just haven't in a long time. <clears throat> but kudos to any of you out there that are trying to get that. All right, so we're both down to 20. We'll be lowering this at Jaina to 10. Uh, so, as you can see, the horrible weather ahead of us, we're about to start going into. All right, transition levels coming up. And... All right, so transition in a couple of miles. I was getting ready to punch in the uh, speed brakes, but the aircraft seemed to take care of it itself. Okay, come up a little bit. All right, that way you all can at least see the basics. The uh, upper half of the lower ECAM, the ECAM here two FMSs and all of the uh, displays in front, of you, which basically other than the two ECAMs in the middle, they're repeats on the other side. There's what we're looking for, standard. So all we got to do, click the STD button and it sets us up for 2950 verified. Let's go over here and we're looking now uh, ground proximity. We don't have to worry about on that one. So once we're at 10,000 feet, the landing lights come on, passenger signs getting ready to be turned on, and that one's complete. Landing ILS is where we'll set it. Come up here. And they need to get off their electronics. There we go, folks. Transition level complete uh, again. We got the fasten seatbelts on, landing lights are at 10,000. <clears> Alright, so folks, we are now 66 miles from the end of descent, or let's call it 69 miles from Boston. Oh, or 505, thanks for your guess. We'll see if you're right. Again, we're going to be doing an auto land, so if I do it all right, it should be under 100 feet a minute. We'll see. <clears throat> I came in with 50 feet at Auckland, but then I shot it again because something happened with the stream, and it came in at 200. So I set something up wrong, but that's okay. All right, so we're slowing to 260. That's because of Rubik. I think. Yeah, Robic brought us to 260. Jaina will bring us to 250 <clears throat> at 11,000. And if you're looking for it on the chart, it is right there. Right where the uh, arrow, where the arc should be, right before it. If everything worked out, I could set it then to 8. As we come across Judy, Judy I may set it for 8,000 and 6,000 as we approach them so we can get to our um, uh, appropriate altitudes. All right, folks, those of you that follow the channel that are here want to put in a prediction. It's the asterisk predict. And you all can say whatever you want. I've, <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll make this a, as best we can. I'm hoping to be able to fly it in myself, but also like the auto land. Like I said, I just always love that. The first time I flew it was back in 2000. I think it was on Flight Sim 2000 in the uh, old Wilco 767. Wow. Zero, zero. I mean, the airfield in Chicago was zero, zero. And right in it landed, flared, everything. I was starstruck at that and how these aircraft are. So, but anyway, you can kind of see now what we're going to do from Barry 
head up on a pretty good intercept course at Ben and then into the airport. We're coming up on 12.5. At uh, Ansley, I'm going to set 4,000. So that way we grab at Ben 4,000 and uh, the hopefully everything lined up right, like I said. Thousand to go. I thought I'd throw one in too, just uh, to see what we're going to do. Okay, coming up on 11,000. Let's go ahead, dial down to 8,000. See if it does it. It may not. There it goes. Okay, folks, we are slow. Oh yeah, I fly on VATSIM a lot. Uh, my only problem with VATSIM are the controllers. Sometimes they're over-controlling. Uh, Los Angeles is one of the biggest ones for that. Chicago and Atlanta. Atlanta's not too bad. But, uh, but the big problem is when you set up for a stream, you're setting up a lot of times for a specific routing in, and they don't like that because they're not controlling you. So that's why I don't a lot of times end up on VATSIM, but I do occasionally. So I know I'm a little harsh with them, but, you know, I sat on the ground 45 minutes in Las Vegas waiting on a clearance because the guy argued with a King Air wanting to fly direct to San Francisco. So I had a lot of troubles with that. I came offline and told him, you know what, just I'm done with y'all. So I don't fly into there. San Francisco is not much better. Uh, <clears throat> So, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just, they just really aggravate me to the nth degree. I'm waiting for it to turn. Come on, get on the localizer. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with Command 2 now for the full. So, uh, Chicago, I sat, I intentionally sat on the ground for 45 minutes. And he really ticked me off. Uh, this was before, oh God, this goes back several years. But uh, he really ticked me off with that 45. I mean, I almost ran out of time to be able to fly. Just, uh, they don't get it. And then I watched the Constellation video uh, with Pilot's Edge. That's why I won't fly on Pilot's Edge. Oh, I have so much, certain amount of time. You can sit and wait for your clearance. I'm like, I don't think so. And that's why I flat out refuse to fly on them. Okay, we're going to put in 5 degrees flap. We're going to slow to 180, and let's, uh, folks, we're going to put that sim to the side, so no uh, worries there. We're coming in. Um, we'll see how things work. Oh, we need to get the speed brakes down and armed. Okay, let, whoa, 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 get back there. Yes, that's one thing that upsets me about Zebo and X-Plane. Let me make sure it's not up. Up. Oh. Yeah, they're up. They are actually up. Okay, so we are on glide path. We've got, oh, you're not supposed to do that. Okay, why are you doing that? 1107, 1107. Okay, auto land maybe 
not doable. Alrighty, here we go, folks. This could be a fun arrival. I may get to land it. Hallelujah. We'll get down, uh, see what happens now. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Hold on here. You're a dummy. There we go. Yeah, it helps to set those up right, folks. <laughs> and she's correcting. Let's get some more flaps in. Distance four. Let's get the gear down. So we don't put any uh, uh, lights or things on it. And we're going to slow to 150. I'm sorry, uh, 155. More flaps, gears down, three green. Approaching minimums. 1,000. Okay, folks, landing lights. On. Three green auto land. And let's arm up the spoilers one more time. Okay, we got the screen spread. Okay, final checks. All right, doing. Hey, look, there's an airport ahead of us. Let's see what happens. Kind of a weird ALSF. Okay, again, this is an auto land, folks. Flare. Yeah. We on the ground? Yep. Reverse. Go forty. One seventy nine. Nice auto land. Eighty. 80. Reverse is off. Let's go outside the plane. And turn the auto brakes off real quick. Let's get across both runways. Well, you know, I can't complain. I'll let it drift a little bit. That's okay. See how this looks. We'll come off here. All right, folks, welcome into Boston. Bleached Clorox, you, uh, oh yeah, these autopilot lands are phenomenal. My dad used to be a navigator on C-141s, and they actually were able to auto land. <laughs> However, what they would do is uh, set the altimeter or something to 10 feet below the airport. So they always smashed into it when they had to do them. <laughs> but hey, you know, that's how it started. So let's get the landing lights off, strobes off. And anti-ice. 
off. Probe heats we can remain on with. Ah, what the heck, let's get the APU going too. All right, so back to here, over to the checklists that we got complete. After landing, auto brakes off, speed brakes down. Oh, we can turn the probe heats off, okay. Uh, we'll do that, off and off. Uh, exterior lights are off, engine starts to auto, weather radar off, flaps up, transponder as needed. One more time up, we'll go to auto, auto, and transponder. We'll have uh, out off. <clears throat> you know, the only other thing I forgot to do on that arrival was be nice and say it over the radio. What a bad pilot I am. Hopefully... Nobody was around to say that. Let's see. Oh, Boston's still down. All right. I'm not going to be able to get a second leg in. Uh, I'm going to be doing some testing for Wednesday's flight to make sure everything's good to go. Let's get this thing moving here. Flaps are still down. They're coming up. Maybe. Maybe. But no, we're not going to be able to get a second flight in. I know Spy Flight's able to, but he also flies a lot shorter legs. This was a uh, scheduled a two and a half hour leg. Granted, we got it in in less than that. But uh, no, we're going to hold off. Like I said, I do need to get that testing done. Because I may need to speak with him to make sure I got everything set right. But uh it should really help with that 747. Or at least, <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it as to whether it'll make it better or not. All right, so... Now, so you all know, we're heading over. we got to go past all of these gates, all of these gates, and then we turn up in the alley there. FedEx parks over... And these buildings here, and Delta's like way back in the corner there. The evil stepchild, I guess, of uh, Boston. I don't know. Wow. Pretty good simulation here. Look at that weather, folks. You can't see the tops of the skyscrapers. Uh, tower's not in it, but boy, it's pretty close. Wow. That you don't see. Oh, uh, maybe with Active Sky and FSX. I shouldn't say that. I don't have Active Sky. I use FS Real Weather. It's fair. It ain't the greatest, but the best thing of all, it's free. We like free. That's why I like Zebo and I like that 747. They're free. All right. A couple things I've been looking for here, the active gates, uh, or whatever it's called, and a better camera to move around the airplane here. So, we got a lot of learning still to do with X-Plane. I've only been flying it for six months out of the 20 years with Microsoft Flight Sim. So, I figure, you know, it took 20 years to know what I know in Flight Sim. It could take that long to know that with X-Plane. <laughs> All right, folks. So, here we come. Here's where we turn up the alley. Now, this was where U.S. Airways, when it was the airline before buying out well before cactus um, america west bought them out who then turned and bought american out but this was all u.s airways down here from the turboprop uh, dash eights which my dad flew once he got out of the air force to uh uh some of the airline you know the charlotte the philadelphia uh, routes and a few going out. You know, you gotta love AI, AI trucks and all. They just go where they want. <clears throat> but they're also sometimes hilarious to watch. And we're not there yet, folks. But this all 
right in here, up around here, that was all U.S. Airways, folks. So, we're almost there, though. From what I understand, this area back here was Delta's. So we're just going to pick something back here. Um, and the bad thing here, folks, is when you come up, well, hopefully it's not as bad as what it was in uh, Nashville. Uh, when we came online or came up, the airplane is almost in the in the terminals. So hopefully it won't be like that when we uh, fire up from Boston the next time to go to Gatwick. And I'm not sure what gate we'll be in and all of that good stuff. And I'm not even sure. Ooh, I kind of like that one off to the side. I overshot it, so we'll take this one. I always like them when they bring us in on an angle. But we'll take this one. I had another one just a little ways up. Dang it. Missed that one too. All right. So let's bring it in. Since there are no marshallers here. Creepy crawl speed. And we'll call that good enough, if for anything, to government. All right, parking brake on. All right, folks, we are here in the gate. Again, uh, bleached Clorox uh, was the closest with the 179. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you're the closest. I landed at 115 feet per minute. Got myself all turned around here. We landed on runway 33 left, if you're familiar with uh, Boston. I missed that up there as well. Let's go over here, finish up the checklist. Landing procedure, or after landing. Uh, trans oh, radar. Oh, uh, sorry to the gate guys. I forgot to turn the radar off. No baby boom here. And we're going to go ahead now and uh, go to standby on our transponder. Four. And over to here. Uh, did I forget anything there at start? External. Oh, we do have some lights to turn off now. The taxi. Not only did I irradiate them, I hit them with the, head, with the taxi lights. Blinded them on top of it. Shut down. Parking brake set. Electrical power. We didn't check that. The APU should be running, and it is. Did I not turn off the autopilot? I did not. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's get back up here and check the uh, power. One and two. APU bleed on. All right, uh, engine start levers, that's the ones below the throttles to cut off. That is these guys. Come on, there goes one. One of them always has to lag. Is that an X-plane thing? <laughs> All right, now we'll just go through the rest. Uh, we'll turn those off, any collision lights, fuel pumps, We'll leave those IFE and the wing ice as is. Okay, we'll set the hydraulic panel when we get up there. We'll leave everything else as is. 
All right, so you guys in your seats that are already standing, shame on you. Um, now they're on. Hydraulics are set. Anti-collision off. Wing lights off. IFE cabin utility set. And they're where they need to be. I did turn the anti-ice off taxi, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was stupid. Sorry, folks. Fuel pumps. That's what I was forgetting. All but one. Well, let's uh, come down here. Go back to home. Not checklists. All right. We're going to click open. Get the cargo doors open. And they're going to start servicing us as well. All right. And GPU is now connected. And that's set. APU bleed off. And let's go to ground power. Chalk set. Checklists for shutdown. Page two. Research, everything else stays the same. APU bleed is going to be turned off. Exterior flight directors can go off. Oh, wait, I did turn them off. My bad. And page three. Transponder to standby. APU switch as needed. Folks, we are shut down in the gate. All I got to do is uh, come up here with... Okay, where are you? There you are. And we'll bring some Air Force's ACAR program to life here. We will finish and file. And we don't have any more bids for now. So we'll... take care of that folks that wraps up the stream for today we do appreciate you for joining uh yeah the autopilot does land better than me too um uh, <clears throat> so but no there's no second leg today again as i said bleached uh clorox uh we're gonna uh test fly the uh 747 out of perth uh just to make sure everything's working right and uh ready for wednesday um other than that, hope you all enjoyed the stream. Thanks for the follows from uh, Bleached Clocks, Lug uh, SK, and Orb 505. And uh, God bless. We'll see you next time around. Let's get out here, take a look at this plane. Oh, look at that. Right in the building. Gotta love it. We'll swing around here, get a better view of it. I know a lot of you, including myself, really like this livery. I don't know if this is something new with the Sky Team or what, but it is really cool. So, all right. So there we go there. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed the stream. We'll chat with you Wednesday. We're going to try to fire up around uh, 1500. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 15Z. It may be later as much as 1700 depending on how tired I am coming in from my 24-hour shift. So, But y'all, uh, we do appreciate you very much. Uh, if you like what you see, click follow. That'll give you an email letting you know where we're going. Y'all have a great day, and uh, we'll look for you the next time out on Wednesday. Y'all have a great day, and God bless.